read the dialogue, the windows of a dialogue in the Arabic world and so on. So for me, I cannot, ac I cannot accept uh, this. You have to have a very clear point because uh, I'm also a member of the Committee for Foreign Affairs and politic for foreign affairs have always comes out from a very clear point and this clear point is pro US it's not about Donald Trump or but it's a pro western uh, view it's about market economy it's about democracy and it's about freedom and if you have th uh, these points together <laughs> you cannot stay on the side of Iran of course and so you have to decide and you have to make very clear where you stand and I think European is the European Union is not very clear uh, it's it's I don't know what is it some are for Israel some are for Iran and the main and the main countries are not very clear so next thing is how much money we spend to UNRWA? If we say never again, you cannot accept that a lot of, a plenty amount of money we found to organization that have, they have school books where in, in class one or class two, anti-Semitism is, it's a daily business with them. And I have the school books translated from class one until class nine and if we spend uh, Germany because um, US um, spent funding uh, to UNRWA and Germany said because our because we are a wealthy country we um, substitute this we substitute this funding so now Germany spent for UNRWA exactly the same amount like UNHCR, like the another organization for all other refugees in the world. So we spend exactly the same amount for UNRWA like for all other refugees in the world. And I say, if we spend this money, of course we can discuss is it good or not good. But if we spend this plenty amount of money, we should say, uh, we should condition it. Is we, we should say, okay, if if you get the money, then you have to share our values: democratic, anti-Semitic, the IRA, um, the IRA anti-Semitic um, definition, definition, and then you can get the money, but with our values. And then we come, then it comes, comes to BDS in Germany. BDS, they have. <laughs> A plain field. They can do what they want. They could. Uh, d they could do what they want. Um, I thought my whole life. Why can this? Because of freedom of speech. Of course, they can. Everybody in Germany can say everything, because if you, the constitution uh, makes the, uh, the contained what you can say or not. So it doesn't matter whether you are reading the Bible or the Torah or the, or the Quran or somebody also uh, read in the, in the, in the Belaristic book, of course. But the only, the most important thing is our constitution. So they can say a lot of things in this, in this country. Of but I could not believe that we spend federal money in this organization. And I was the initiator of a resolution to ban federal funding to BDS with my colleague Bichan Chisarai and then we uh, we make not the same I, I was like we we do not the same mistake like the uh, resolution uh, about UN um, voting behavior so before we bring the resolution to the parliament we spoke about we spoke about with we spoke with CDU with SPD and with the Green Party, and after a lot of pressure and after a lot of wine, beers, and uh, harder <laughs> um, drinks, we find a compromise, and so we get a majority for ban federal money for BDS. So and this was. A absolutely mind change in Germany to have such a motion in the parliament and maybe I, I would 
I would wish this motion comes to um, uh, have a signal, have a, have a signal to Europe, to all another countries, to bring the same motion in the Parliament and get a majority. Therefore, because BDS, it's definitely anti-Semitic, anti and we should not spend money from a federal or another level in this organization. So, and it, how bad it is, you see in Germany now, we have an old a old timer meeting in July. And now this old timer meeting in July is cancelled because it is a it's an economic uh, thing, and now we have a Al Quds march there. So and that's that's amazing, and and the people stand up, but uh, uh, two less people they stand up. So the, the whole society have to stand up and say no to Al Quds in Germany. But it's uh, so PDS. The next thing is Hezbollah. What's, what's about Hezbollah? Why do we in Germany, or why did we in Germany, um, divide his, Hezbollah into, uh, into rings, in the political and, um, and a military wing? Hezbollah themselves do not divide it, uh, this into, into rings. And so we did it in the same way, like Netherlands, uh, like UK and now also <laughs> seems a little very arrogant, but it was also my <laughs> my initiative um, to bring these arms together and say clearly in the parliament what Hezbollah is. Hezbollah is a terrorist organization, and of course we can we have um, we denied activities from Hezbollah. In Germany, so we have in one year, 2019, three mind change resolutions in, the German, in our federal parliament. It was the voting behavior against UN. It was the anti-PDS resolution, and in December was maybe like a, a Christmas gift or Ranuka gift, maybe a, a, a Chrisnuka gift, maybe such things. And have this Chrisnuka gift? Uh, it was the resolution against Hezbollah. And this was a completely mind change in Germany. So, and I hope this would be a very loud signal to another European countries and of course the European Parliament because you are the, the government uh, above us and you have to, uh, to thank this and you ha have to speak very clearly with your French partners. Um, and then I hope we will make it, we are very serious to say never again, we also mean never again and and deal like never again but okay yes okay thank you so much M mr engelberg uh, would you like to say something about this and i think about uh, also success stories that you wanted to move to race thank you very much but i think uh although you applauded just now but i think antonio and frank really need a uh, total appreciation and applause for what they are doing. Uh, please uh, give them... <laughs> I, I can't tell you how important their work is for every one of us who wants to work on exactly all those issues you were mentioning. And, uh, uh, and Frank, you're perfectly right. Uh, every step you are undertaking as all of us help we help each other and let let me just give you an example uh the motion which was turned down about the voting attitude uh, in international organizations it was of course for me uh, a perfect example of what we should start in in the austrian parliament and we were uh, overta overtaken in the case of austria by chancellor kurz and the government who insisted of taking it as part of the government program. So now we are in the absolutely strong position in Austria that we have it written down in the government program, which we have in the coalition with the Green Party. Wow. Uh, and we already started to change the voting attitude in, in two very important cases, and not the least now uh, regarding the ICC proceedings, where Austria, in an unbelievable historic step takes sides of Israel now, together with Germany, and but a very few other countries. And I can't tell you how hard that was to do. I mean, there is a, 
uh, I mean, an Austrian foreign ministry which still stands in the tradition of Bruno Kreisky, who you may remember, and his very pro-Arab, pro-Palestinian um, attitude. Uh, it was it was a like uh, uh, a big a big uh, amount of pressure we we had to enforce till till the chancellor really imposed that he wants to change that, but. All that is then o always based also on the fact that we could say, well, but you know, the Germans are doing the same as well. Uh, so we help each other. And I think uh, sometimes you may consider that if you are in contact with your local po uh, politicians, parliamentarians, whatever, that, you know, it's really not important enough. No, please continue to do so. On every level, on every political level, Every piece of, uh, you know, is, is adding to our position and we can refer to each other. And now let me briefly try to tell you what we did. I mean, it is really unbelievable in three years. I mean, first of all, uh, Chancellor Kurtz uh, uh, went to Israel in 2018, which is really, a, it was a historic visit, which was also meant to be historic in, in the, in his approach of, of uh, addressing uh, the, the past of Austria, the responsibility, the guilt. I mean, and never a chancellor has spoken such clear wor words about Austria's responsibility in the Shoah, about the crimes committed in the name of Austria and, and Austrians. Uh, so it was really an, an amazing appearance in Yad Vashem, then at the Global Forum of the AJC of the American Jewish Committee, where there were 2,000 people uh, giving him standing ovations. Uh, afterwards, we also, uh, Austria also sponsored or, or, or gave a big share in the funding of the archive project of Yad Vashem, uh, also a very important uh, step there. And, uh, and also, let's say, regarding the past, now uh, the, the, uh, there will be a wall in Vienna uh, in, a, in a park w which will quote all the names of Shoah victims, name by name, about 65,000 Jews who were killed or perished in the Shoah, uh, which is another very important uh, signal uh, how Austria changed its attitude in approaching the past, which for m much too many years Austria failed to do. Now, uh, if we now look at the, at the, at the present and the future, <coughs> um, I assume there are, are no press people here to quote me. Uh, at least I want to say I don't want to be quoted for what I'm telling you now. So I was negotiating the, the government program, uh, also the chapter of foreign policy. <clears throat> and uh, when it came to uh, uh, the, the, we had a, f a full chapter on Israel. Uh, it was immediately decided that we should form a subgroup for that. And th that really irritated me because I felt, well, why don't we form a subgroup on Kurds or on, on Crimea? Or uh, So I, I, I was kind of reluctant in the first moment, but then we really did it and we were two on two between the Green Party and our People's Party. <clears throat> and I must say it was a great decision to do, to do because it was quite impressive that there was a way of getting a common understanding uh, on, on what we are longing for. So I think uh, and one of the issues was to explain that uh, we have a common understanding that, uh, that the issue of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, if that is ever to be solved, doesn't mean that there will be peace and, 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 and heaven in the Middle East. So it really has nothing to do with each other. Number two, very aw awkwardly, like the only conflict we are addressing in our government declaration, and even more we have even have a solution for it, is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I mean, <coughs> we don't speak about the Kurds, we don't speak about the Crimea, we don't, and, we, and, and of course we don't offer a solution. But in regards of Israel, we, I mean, we have to address the conflict and we have to know the solution is the two-state solution. So, uh, 
I managed, I think, to what I managed to do is to say is okay. Let's uh, let's keep the folklore of stating that we are strongly committed to this two-state solution. But first of all, uh, we will include that we are committed to the fight not only against anti-Semitism but against anti-Zionism. A big thing with the Green Party to achieve. <laughs> Number two is that we were uh, that we are committed to the security of Israel and to the existence of Israel as a Jewish state, another unbelievable thing to achieve with the Green Party. And number three is that we are committed to a change of our voting attitude in international organizations. Uh, I think it was, for me, uh, really a moment of uh, the feeling of a big achievement we were able to make. And um, it is, um, um, it's hard work, but I think it's worth it, and that's why I try to encourage you to uh, to work on it. And at the seven, you know, at the ceremonies of the, for the 75th uh, commemoration of the liberation of Auschwitz, I thought, well, they're really it, it's beautiful to watch it. I mean, there are really leaders of all countries, uh, major countries of the world, giving really unbelievably Im impressive um, uh, statements. And then I thought, well. Why, w how would they react if I asked them about how, if they would give a strong statement regarding the ICC proceedings? Or whether w I would ask them whether they would give a statement on BDS? Or whether uh, they would uh, uh, give a strong uh, statement of support for the peace plan to say, well, at least it's a basis for negotiations. So I thought, well, I'm not so sure if Mr. Macron or you know all the others would be ready to do that. And I think that's exactly what we have to ask from them today. And I agree completely with what you said. Uh, it's easy to, you know, it became easy. It wasn't always easy. It became easy to commemorate and to mourn uh, the, 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 the tragic, tragedy of the Shoah and, and to mourn the kill Jews. Uh, but I think what we really have to demand is step by step uh, a, a commitment to the causes, to the present and future causes of the Jewish people and of Israel. And I think uh, we couldn't have better friends than the two of you. And we should be really looking for more of people like you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Antonio Lopez Isturiz, um, uh, today's conference, uh, the today and tomorrow conference is about uh, coming with a plan of action against anti-Semitism. What do you think uh, could be done uh, even more yeah. on European level, in the European Parliament and uh, on the level of the ministers, the EU, the EU Council of Ministers? To transform theory into practice, uh, many of the resolutions that we have made, I have given you in my previous speech one or two examples of success of action, but it's not enough, it's not enough. Uh, many times, as it was stated here, some member states, because the European Union, I have to make one clarification, still is member states. Brussels is powerful, but you said that we are above, there is not so much truth on that. <laughs> still is the member countries who are in charge. And our very delicate mission is to bring everybody together in the same points. And in this particular question, there are, as you put it very rightly, countries that are very friendly and others that are not so, for whatever reasons. Because they have this uh, geostrategical you know, idea that maybe being friendly with Iran uh, will, be, will keep us in a better position. They couldn't be far from reality. And many of us, we have accused in the European institutions of this hypocrisy and this lack of vision that negotiating with such a regime will never produce, and as now has been demonstrated, that the, uh, the uh, GOC, this uh, agreement on nuclear we weapons upgrading, now Iran is, is, is not accomplishing anything, as some of us, we already knew that this was going to happen. But uh, some naive politicians in Europe, 
I'm not one of them. Now I said I'm very naive in many things, but now I'm not. Others are. They have to, they have to come to the reality that this cannot continue. Uh, uh, and the basis of everything, we have to start from the roots. I said it before, is education. There has to be one subject in all countries and we have maybe to impose that at European level. To have, uh, you know, in the, uh, let's say, from school, uh, education uh, to combat anti-Semitism. We have to work with kids. I have the feeling that with many people now, it's a lost cause. Elder people uh, in Europe and so on. Uh, we have to work with young people. We can, we can alleviate that if we work now from now with them. I know that the European Union has many projects on this sense, but uh, we have to kick, uh, we have to give them a kick, uh, a push. The nomination of this vice president for the first time in charge of anti-Semitic, I cannot stress enough the importance of this. Uh, that there is the, the portfolio of anti-Semitism is recognized and is now in there. It's more than an administrative bureaucratic thing. It gives a political impetus. And uh, I have already talked with him, as I told you, he's a good for dear friend for many years, uh, the uh, Greek commissioner, uh, Margaritis Sinas, that to work on education. We feel that this is very important. It's a long-standing commitment, I know, because there are also urgent measures that have to be taken now, okay? Uh, and that is the commitment from our member states to adhere to the principles of the European Union. And that is that anti-Semitism has to be persecuted legally, but has to be persecuted. And this is not happening in some European countries, including mine. As I told you, where there is uh, some, even part of the government, even part of the government is championing the contrary. And this we cannot allow. It. And sorry for that, I told you, I don't want to make here political uh, campaign. I'm not ideologizing, others are doing. And I want to prevent this. The defense of the Jewish community in Europe and the Jewish people is the defense of ourselves, of the Europeans. Someone said it before me, it's, uh, and I want to adhere to that principle. What we are doing here for you some of us, as you said, you included, and many others, we are doing for you, but also for Europe. If we fail with you, Europe is over. The ideal of what unites now Europe, it's over. Then I will go back to my house in Madrid, because it's finito, over, if we fail you. Then the European Union doesn't merit to exist, because we failed what we are defending. We have a few minutes left, and I would like to ask uh, Mr. Müller-Rosen, said uh, Germany is going to take over uh, chairmanship of the European Union in the second half of uh, this year. What do you think uh, could be done? Uh, because a German, uh, when a country takes over the, the presidency, it has uh, more power than uh, another country, So uh, usually. So what can uh, be done uh, in, the, in terms of... Uh, against demonization of Israel in terms of EU-Israel enhancing, like uh, uh, Antonio Lopez Histori said, uh, there's uh, much more to speak about uh, enhancing EU-Israel relations in, in different sectors and not speaking always about uh, settlements, about you know, the, 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 the topics that divide. Please. <coughs> You can, I can, how many time you have? No, not more time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think two minutes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, I can. <laughs> but the first thing is to recognize that I do not know what counselor is the guy for the counselorship then, because we have a little struggle in, the, uh, in, in our politics right now. But, however, I would say the most important thing is to recognize that candle chains will change nothing. The first thing is you have to recognize that we have to 
need a good therapy against anti-Semitic. And if you want to have a good therapy, a 100% therapy against anti-Semitic, you have to have a diagnos uh, di diagnos diagnostic um, of the issues for anti-Semitic. Right now, in Germany, we diagnose my, my maybe only one-third, the right-wing anti-Semitic. But we have also a pan-Arabic anti-Semitic. And we have, you, s you mentioned it, a very strong academic left-wing anti-Semitic. And this three you have to bring together and say what, what's going on. I came from, uh, so I, was, I was born in, in the GDR, the German Democratic Republic. In my constituency, 90% of the people think Israel is the imperialistic, fascistic, a state from the uh, US and they stand on side Palestine and the former government from GDR founded the, uh, the army of uh, Syria, founded the army of, of Egypt. And so they, uh, comp they, the people grown up in this region, in this uh, eastern region, are completely brainwashed over 40 years. And they, they grown up with lies. And so you have, and my, <laughs> my task is to bring the, to tell them the truth, this is the first thing. But what can they do? The first thing is to recognize that it's absolutely important for all question in the world between China and the US that we need a united, in a various